what is going on guys welcome back for another quad vlog so you guys are probably going to be noticing a bit of a scenery change in the vlogs um, I'm headed out to Rapid City to go back to school for uh, my last year so uh, and, and Rapid City is out in the hills so there's mountains hills um, there's off-roading for the quad there's a lot lot more to do out there than where I'm at right now so it should be pretty fun I made a few videos out there last year when I bought my Triumph Daytona. I, I, I maybe have maybe 10 videos on my channel um, that I made out in Rapid City. But uh, I think I've gotten a lot better at moto vlogging over this summer. I hope you guys uh, have noticed and I hope you guys agree. Um, so you should be seeing some more, some more quality content from me out there. It's a lot more enjoyable to watch those type of videos because there's so much more to do out there. So definitely stay tuned to the channel for that. And so you guys are probably wondering how I'm going to get the quad and the bike out there. Well, my bike is actually already out there. I shipped it out um, with a friend, I think, last weekend with a bunch of his bikes. So um, the Daytona's already out there, so I'm pretty stoked about that. And that's what I ride the most, and that's what I have the most fun on out there anyway. So, But I'm planning on having the quad shipped out there with another friend probably later this month or uh, sometime in September probably. If you don't know, there's tons of trails out in Rapid City, um, out in the hills, lots of fun off-roading. I have a blast out there on this thing. So yeah guys, I'm super stoked to get out there and start riding, start making some videos for you guys with some quality scenery other than just a town. The city gets pretty boring when you have a four-wheeler and a sport bike because you just really can't use them, you know? So anyways, today's video I wanted to uh, I wanted to cover the top five modifications I think you should do to any quad. And I've done a similar video on my channel um, like this. That was for motorcycles, the top, uh, top mods or upgrades you could do to your motorcycle. But this video is mainly geared towards quads. So of course there's going to be a little bit of overlap between the two videos because there's only so much performance modifications you can do um, to any engine. Oh my god, what do we have going on up here? Oh my god. So the first modification on my list, and the first thing I did to my four-wheeler was, I got a power commander. And of course you can only install a power commander if your quad is fuel injected. So, um, for those of you that aren't fuel injected, um, re-jetting would be the equivalent. And the reason why a power commander is my number one is because if you're going to do any other modifications such as an exhaust or intake or even maybe a big bore kit, you're going to need a power commander. So let's say for example I had an exhaust and an intake on this four-wheeler without, uh, without a power commander. What that would do would allow a lot more air into the engine because it's a lot less restrictive. The purpose of adding an exhaust and an intake on your four-wheeler is to make it less restricted. But in order to account for that extra air you're allowing into your engine with that exhaust and intake, you need to give the bike more fuel, and that's pretty much only done with a power commander or um, rejetting your carbs, of course. So a power commander is a pretty important first mod if you plan on doing anything else performance-wise to your engine. So while we're on the topic of performance mods, I think the second mod I'm going to list off um, is an exhaust. Oh my god! Is that like a gray hair in her song? I think it's huge. And like I was just saying, it's pretty important to get that power commander or rejet your quad if you're going to get an aftermarket exhaust because you can actually damage your engine by running your quad too lean, which means you're running it too air heavy. You can burn your valves. Man, look at all that trash. I swear to god I come out here like once a week and there's like a new mattress. It's ridiculous. Who is this? I've got a car parked here. Huh. I don't know. And I actually don't have an exhaust on my Raptor 700. Um, what I did do, I took out my baffle and that actually helped a lot. The stock baffle on this Raptor 700 was so restrictive. The quad, you could barely hear it at all with the regular baffle in it. So um, when I took that out and re retuned it with my Power Commander, it made a heck of a difference. So besides those two big performance mods, um, something else that I've done, I'm not, this isn't on the list, but uh, kind of a tip I'll give you guys 
is I've removed my air box lid. I actually did notice a difference. Of course you were gonna wanna clean your air filter a little bit more often than you usually would, but I definitely did notice a difference re removing my air box lid just because it allows more airflow into the engine. And of course, if you do remove your airbox lid, you're gonna have to tune for that as well. Obviously, removing your airbox lid is gonna allow more air into your engine, um, as well as it's gonna require you to clean your air filter a little bit more often than you usually would. So if you guys are looking for a, a little cheap extra power, it's, it's pretty minuscule, but it's definitely a difference, um, especially with the Raptor 700. Try removing your airbox lid. So the third mod I have for you guys is definitely a must if you're going to do any sort of off-roading. I guess if you're going to ride your four-wheeler just on the street, you don't have to do it. But if you're going to do any sort of off-roading, this next mod is definitely a must. And that is getting a full skid plate for your quad. Before I took my quad out to the hills, I got a full aluminum skid plate from, I think I bought it off eBay, I think. I think it was maybe just under 100 bucks, pretty reasonably priced for um, the protection it provides. I have full A-arm protectors and I have a, a full aluminum skid plate that runs the bottom of my quad. The only thing that I do not have is a swing arm skid plate, but I do have the stock one obviously that the quad came with. And after taking my quad out to the hills last year, um, if you guys don't know anything about the Black Hills in South Dakota, they're super rocky, a lot of sharp rocks, a lot of granite, stuff like that. My skid plates definitely saved my butt a time or two. In addition, they saved my A-arms from just getting scraped to hell. And I think there's a skid plate out there, um, reasonably priced for pretty much every quad, especially the Raptors and the YFCs. Oh dang, I need gas. Uh, oh, I did get an arrow. Dang. I was not expecting that. The fourth mod I have for you guys is wheel spacers or um, an extended rear axle slash um, extended A-arms in the front. Now, I went the cheap route. I just got wheel spacers. I think I have two and a half inch wheel spacers on each wheel, which is quite a bit, but I haven't had one ever break on me or anything like that. And I, I do my fair share of off-roading when I'm out in the hills. The reason I have wheel spacers or an extended axle added to um, my list of top mods is because the Raptor and a lot of other trail quads are pretty narrow and I realize that it's because they're narrow to fit on the trails but um, they tip really easy. So if any of you have a YFZ or race specific um, quad this mod might not be so important to you because those are naturally usually a couple inches wider than a trail quad such as the Raptor 700. And after I added my wheel spacers, they added a lot of uh, stability and um, the handling improved as well as it made me feel a little bit more comfortable riding it because I knew the quad wasn't going to tip as easy. Not to mention that it looks a heck of a lot better widened than it does stock. And the fifth and final mod I have for you guys, you guys are probably going to say is stupid, but believe it or not, it's tires because the stock tires that a lot of quads come with are absolutely crap. I invested in a set of Duro Scorcher tires about, well actually right when I got this quad for the street and they are so much better. Not to mention they have so much more life left in them. I mean I've put probably, I don't know how many miles, but a lot of miles on these tires and they look really good for how many uh, miles and how much riding I've put on them. When I was younger, I had a Raptor 350 with just the stock set of um, dirt tires or off-road tires. And I know, obviously, that you know they would have gotten worn down, but they got eaten alive on the street. And I know the street's super hard on, on off-road tires, but it's so worth the investment to just buy tires for your riding application. I still have my stock off-road tires with separate rims for this quad, and I usually put them on during the winter. Or of course, when I go out to the hills, I'll probably put them on, just because they're so much better on the trails. And the most important tire, in my opinion, to have right are the front two, because that's what you steer with. I've had these out on like gravel, let's say, and these just float around like crazy. Uh-oh, top. He didn't put his lights on, we good. 
But like I was saying, it's just super important that you guys buy tires for your own riding application. Whether that be street, sand, stud your tires if you're gonna ride in the winter. Buy a decent set of tires. I mean, you, you will notice a difference, I promise you. So guys, that's the end of today's quad vlog. Thanks for coming back and watching as always. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys stay tuned for next Saturday. I'm probably gonna have a vlog out on the Daytona riding out in the hills. So that's gonna be super cool. The scenery's gonna be a heck of a lot better. So I hope you guys uh, stay tuned for that. And if you guys like the video, don't forget to hit that like button below and subscribe and I'll see you next Saturday.